Hi everybody, this is Bentley the Compost Guy Christy here. As you might imagine, I'm the creator of the website redwormcomposting.com, where we do indeed have way too much fun with worms. Now, redworm composting is where I blog about worm composting, as you might imagine, or you might already know. So if this is a topic of interest, I do recommend you check it out. Just so you know, this handsome young man right here is not actually me. This is Mark from Kansas, our roving reporter here on the website. He is a contribu contributor to Red Room Composting. This little guy up here is actually me, and if you're really curious, you can check out my ugly mug on my bio page. Alrighty, well we're not here to talk about me, and we're not here to talk about Red Room Composting. What we're going to talk about here is the fundamentals of worm composting. I just wanted to provide people with a bit of an overview to help everyone get a bit of more of a, a big picture view on what this this whole thing is all about. So there's two key components to worm composting as you can see. Number one, you need some sort of a system. In other words, the habitat. And of course, you need the worms. This is worm composting after all. So let's start by talking about the system. What components make up the system? Well, it has to be something that provides darkness, okay? Because light can harm worms, and worms just generally don't like light. So you want something so opaque, in other words, not see-through, and you don't want to put the system in direct sunlight. Since aside from the light, having too much direct sunlight on a system can end up overheating the system and harming the worms. Warmth. You need a system that's relatively warm in order to optimize the vermicomposting process. So 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, 59 to 86 F, F Fahrenheit, this is essentially the ideal range. Worms love it wet, but you got to be careful because too much moisture leads to a low oxygen content. And oxygen is really important. The worms do tolerate low oxygen, but it's great to have it since it speeds up the process, it results in healthier worms, and it results in a better quality end product, your vermicompost. Let's talk about food. What exactly is worm food? Well, I'm sure a lot of people think of the food waste that you're adding to these systems as, as the food. But technically speaking, it is actually the microbes that colonize and feed on that food that are the food source for the worms. So in other words, you help the microbes, you're going to help the worms. How do we help the microbes? Well, there's a number of different things we can do. You can age the materials. You can chop them up, blend them, freeze them, cook them. Essentially, you're breaking down the structural integrity. You're increasing the surface area. And these things are going to help those microbes to colonize. Just be careful, though. When you do any of these things, you're going to tend to release a lot more water all at once and you can also end up overfeeding because it doesn't look like as much material that you're adding just so just keep that in mind bedding this is a often discussed and very important component of the worm composting system essentially bedding is a carbon rich absorbent material it adds structure it increases airflow it should air increase airflow anyway it helps with water absorption and retention. It helps with the carbon to nitrogen ratio. If you add too much nitrogen, and generally food waste is more nitrogen than the bedding material, and too much N results in ammonia release, which can be toxic to the worms. In general, you're aiming for about 30 to 1 to 40 to 1, but it's not rocket science. Don't worry too much about it. Generally, just somewhat higher than regular composting, and I always say just err on the side of bedding. When in doubt, add bedding. Some examples. Shredded cardboard is a primary example of bedding. I like egg carton cardboard and drink tray cardboard, but corrugated cardboard is also really good and the worms love that. Peat moss and cocoa fiber, they're excellent for water retention but not so much for airflow. They're very small particle size. So I recommend mixing them with something chunky, something like your shredded cardboard. That will help with the airflow. Old standby shredded newsprint, I do recommend to stick with the black and white though since the color ink can contain various chemicals. And shredded paper, again avoid the bleached office paper, avoid the glossy magazine paper. These again can contain various chemicals as well. Brown paper is fantastic stuff so if you can get some of that, that is ideal. Bedding is a long term food source. People sort of think of it more as a habitat 
structure type of thing and it's that as well but don't forget that the worms are consuming it over time and a few other things to keep in mind betting is my friend this is an important mantra and I highly recommend you keep that in the back of your mind at all times there is no such thing as too much betting so make sure you are continuing to add betting over time to keep things balanced some materials provide both a food and a bedding component all in one and aged livestock manure is a primary example of that alrighty so let's move on to the container you can of course do it yourself or you can purchase your worm composting bin the easiest place to start and what I recommend for somebody just starting out is the Rubbermaid type of system now I've made a video about a basic Rubbermaid tub you can find it just by visiting my YouTube page and it's just setting up a basic worm bin you can see that there and the souped up version is basically the same thing but it has air vents and it's called the mini and again you can find a link to that on my uh, YouTube page so that's what it looks like okay alrighty so the pros cheap and easy to set up great for moisture retention because of the plastic and also very durable the problem is that there's less airflow in these types of systems which results in lower quality compost increased moisture content which I don't have written here sometimes it can pool in the bottom which isn't good and of course this results in a yucky material that's a bit more of a hassle to try and separate the uh, worms and the compost and just in general there's more potential for trouble using a system like this if you want something a little bit more advanced you might opt for a wooden system and I've created my own wooden outdoor bin and I am no do-it-yourselfer so really when it comes down to it if I can do it you can do it too the pros of this type of system better airflow more breathability it's easier to keep cooler in the summer because of evapor evaporative cooling essentially the water evaporates and that results in in the cooling of the system it obviously won't be too wet because of this and just generally it's going to result in a better quality compost it is more expensive to set up a system like this and generally it's going to require a bit more technical skill and especially in the summer it can result in <coughs> drier a drier system which <coughs> excuse me all right let's talk about systems you can purchase the way I see it if you're gonna buy a bin or you're gonna buy a system you might as well get a flow through system there's no point buying some sort of tub system all right and this is also known as continuous flow essentially garbage goes in one end compost comes out the other end very common version is some variation of the stacking system many people use a plastic version the one I have is wooden so that's the stacking system the one I actually prefer to use right now is called the worm in it's a single compartment system you don't have to mess around with different stacking trays or anything like that same principle garbage goes in compost comes out the bottom and it works very very well all right so that's basically it for the system let's do a quick overview of the worms of course we're not talking about soil worms here so not the side work walk rain worms not the garden worms sometimes the ones from the bait bait store but just be, make sure you're getting the right ones they're not the big Canadian night crawlers those are soil worms we are of course talking about composting worms the primary example is red worms Icenia fetida and there's also its cousin the European night crawler which is Icenia hortensis okay it's just some things to keep in mind sorry I've been rushing this just trying to keep this within 10 minutes that's basically it for my overview I hope you've enjoyed this presentation once again I am Bentley the compost guy Christie, creator of the website redroomcomposting.com <laughs>